independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. This is the largest espionage attack in history. This is as though the Russians got a pass key, a skeleton key, for about half the locks in the country. Yeah, it's 18,000 companies and uh, government institutions scattered around the U.S. and the world. This is an espionage attack. As far as we know, the reason they got in was to steal information from the U.S. government. Of course, that's why they got in. Cybersecurity are Richard Clark right there, the largest. And if you haven't been paying attention because there's a lot of other stuff going on, this is huge. They got into just about everything, including potentially the nukes. This is a massive thing. And they weren't there for an hour. They weren't there for a week. They were there for quite a while. Understand that. I want to, I want to throw that to, they were there for quite a while. Nine months? Nine months. That's how big this was. Nine months. Tom Bassett says it here, and I think it's very interesting. Imagine if you got home one night and your home was broken into and the front door was kicked in and your neighbor said, well, ma'am, uh, the, the door was broken down. The Russians were here. They've been in your house for six to nine months. But don't worry, we're going to fix your front door and we're going to make sure there's nobody in there before we go home and leave you in there for the night. You, you might be okay and feel a little bit comfortable, but pretty soon you'd realize that you'd be looking at every plant and unscrewing every light bulb. Yeah. And that's the way that this was. Now, in saying all of that, what did they get? How bad was it? How bad could it get? Let's understand something. For four years, Russia, 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 Trump, all of these things has gone on, right? Russia, 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 Russia. It turned out to be it just it was a horrible spy novel meant to bring down the president. Uh, and it was it was a joke. Russia, North Korea, every, every China, everybody does this. We're doing it. Now, is this the biggest ever reported? The reality is, is if we did it to Russia, which we are doing, and they're still doing it to us, and we're doing it to China, and they're doing you don't, they're never going to tell you what we got and what they let happen. We, on the other hand, we're, we're transparent in a lot of ways that other nations just aren't. But this is a big deal. You have an outgoing president that heard basically that Putin's his best friend. And Trump, by the way, has been eerily silent on this again, which frustrates a lot of people. But you also have an incoming president. And an incoming president is usually going to get tested. Most people think it's in North Korea or somebody like that. The reality is, is it's Russia. And Putin pushes the buttons. But this is a big deal. Very big. A cyber hack of this nature is really the modern equivalent of Russian bombers reportedly flying undetected over the entire country. They didn't drop bombs, but they had the capacity to show that our defense is extraordinarily inadequate, that our cyber warfare readiness is uh, extraordinarily weak, that they think so little of our ability to, to fight back from a cyber standpoint that they do this with impunity. So our national security is extraordinarily vulnerable. Yeah. It is. What I tell you guys the other day, what do spies look like? Spies are guys that are nowadays nerds, right? It's not the guys that are sneaking around with different accents and tuxedos and drinking, you know, you know, amazing drinks that, uh, you know, cost $50,000 and there's only one ever made bond kind of thing. Oh, my, we're staying in ice hotel. No. It's nurse. It's guys drinking uh, Mountain Dew. And when they're not doing these kind of things, they're playing League of Legends and Fortnite and things like that. That's the world of spying. And this was massive. A huge deal. And over the coming days and weeks, this is going to get bigger because they were there. Think about that. And not just there for a little bit. Nine months in some cases. Nine months. They slowly got in and just hung out and were able to observe. In a setting not to have the White House aggressively speaking out and protesting and taking a punitive action is really, really quite extraordinary. Yeah, it is. I agree with Romney there. Trump has been eerily silent on this and he needs to look for all the crap about. I will say this about Trump for all the crap. 
about Russia, Russia, Russia. And Trump, for whatever reason, says very little about Putin. But on Russia, the nation, he's been extremely tough, where others weren't. But you've got to come out and say something. You have to come out and address. You have to come out and say something. There needs to be action taken, even if it's minimal, even if it's symbolic. Something needs to be said and done. And the non-acknowledgement, because you're still out trying to 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 figure out how you can undo what took place 30 plus days ago in a few states is insane. It truly is. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. So Mike Pence today got himself the vaccine. Good for him. Got the shot. Asked some questions. Are any of you immunocompromised or on immunosuppressants? All right. Good to go. Good to go. We're good. Good. Thumbs up. Yeah! Wouldn't that be funny if he said that? He didn't. No sense of comedy timing there, I think, uh, from, from Pence. But he did speak about what's going on, the vaccines, all of this stuff, which is, you know, we've got, we're going to touch on Moderna a little bit, but the reality is that's the second one. Over the weekend, it should be totally approved. FDA and the CDC will get through their things in the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours. Should be on planes Sunday and into Monday and out there. And we'll have six million dosage. Uh, so so that's a that's a good situation. You know, as the Christmas holiday approaches, this is always a season of hope. We gather here today at the end of a historic week to affirm to the American people that hope is on the way. Yeah, it is. It is on the way. Trump not getting the vaccine as of yet. And his thought process, and I understand the thought process, which is I just had it. I don't know if I need to get it. I've had the shot. But it's more than that. It's it, it, Look, this is, when you look back at legacy, this is a success that you need to hang your hat on. When you look back at, at 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 this, you know there was there every president's going to have ups and downs and failures and successes. How the media has covered it, I don't really. You know, people get mad at me because I don't. Why don't you call it to me? I don't care what the media says. I don't because I've got to do my own fact checking, and most people don't want to. But the reality is, is he's had some successes. He's had some failures at the end of the day. This is the thing that you should be out there touting for the last 30 days or 25 days of your, 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 your presidency. This should be the thing where you're out there. Look, this, the economy is still ready to roar. The stock market is still in a good position. We got through this thing, uh, you know, with, with in a vaccine. People said we couldn't do it in less than a year. We did it in nine months. We did all. These are the things that you should be talking about. So I think it, symbolically, hell yeah, he should have been out there making sure that he gets his vaccine. Because for a lot of people out there, who, you know, who are Trump supporters that, you know, you know, I get texts every day. I get tweets every day. Dude, you're a fool. You're an idiot. No, I'm not. I'm honest. Look, you don't have to believe this thing is real to know that it's affected your life. You don't have to believe. Well, I'm not really worried about it. I don't care about it. It's not real. It's a it's a it's it's a it's a hoax to swing an election. It's affected people's lives. It's destroyed the economy. Just about everybody in the nation has been affected some way or another, whether it's been through the health side of it or the loss of a loved one or the economy. And Trump getting out there and getting the shot in front of everybody, I think, would go a long way, I think, for a lot of his supporters. But he's still out there doing what he's doing, which is still trying to figure out how they can flip this thing as he continues to hope that he has unlimited Hail Marys. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you, Raycon's best earbuds around. Did a little workout this morning. Got up early, baby. Did myself a little bit of a workout. I enjoyed it. 
had my Raycons in. No wires, no stems, uh, just a phenomenal, amazing product that Ray J put together. These earbuds, six hours of talk time, straight out of the box. You seamlessly and easily hook it up to your phone, your computer, whatever it is, and away you go. And from then on, it's completely seamless. And straight out of the box, you can use it six hours of talk time. That noise-isolating fit separates it in such a way that is just incredible. And the no stems and wires, especially when you're working out, is awesome as well. Do what I did. Get yourself the best earbuds around. Well under $100. Get yours now. And especially getting ready to start the new year, you're going to be saying to yourself, I'm going to get myself in shape. I'm going to start working out more. I'm going to start doing things. Here's a perfect way to reward yourself and get yourself going. They are the E25s from Raycons. Get yours now and save big. They start well under 100 bucks. Buyraycon.com slash Chad saves you 15 extra percent. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Also order, he could order the, the um, in, within the swing states, if he wanted to, he could take military capabilities and he could place them in those states and basically rerun an election in each of those states. I mean, it's not unprecedented. I mean, these people it out there talking about martial law, it's like it's something that we've never done. We've done, the martial law has been instituted 64, 64 times, Greg. So I'm not calling for that. We have a constitutional process. We clearly have a constitutional process. I think you highlighted some of that in, the, in, the, in your previous segment. That has to be followed. Yeah, no, that's uh, General Flynn. Yeah, we've declared martial law on uh, more than a few occasions. Uh, but now he's not advocating for that. But do you see the insanity of this? Do you see it? So, wait, hold on a second. You you want him to declare martial law in swing states that you didn't win so he can rerun the election that's uh that's a no go and there are people out there like amen patriot you're a patriot <laughs> yeah let's take away other people's votes well what happens if you didn't win this one well then we'll just declare ourselves the king enough 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 You've got 30 days and then potentially the chance to run again in four years. That's something that he so desires. In the in that time, you've got a chance to have 30 days to talk about all of the stuff that you did that was good. The economy. The way that you took on immigration, albeit I didn't like the way you handled some of it. You got your tax cuts. You you went out and you tackled things that a lot of people, you know, you, you, perfect example is, and I know it's never enough for a lot of people, but he went out and he said, we're going to do prison reform. We're going to do, we're going to do reforms in places. He did stuff that was good. The right to try he, the regulations, get out there and talk about that. Still trying to rerun this to me is, is insane. It's time now to move on. And if you have something that you can prove in courts, then you then you go and do it. So far, it hasn't happened. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Of course, we're not too far away from, yes, Christmas, one week. What's going to happen? Are people going to travel? Are we going to do anything? Mm. You're saying cancel the family gathering for Christmas. I'm not saying that that everyone should cancel the family gathering. I'm saying that people will need to make individual choices. And when you're talking about having a congregate setting for a dinner, not cancel the family aspect, but you know, you have some Christmas dinners, people bring friends and others in who travel from different parts of the country. You could have 15, 20 people at a dinner. That's really somewhat risky. Fauci there, the number one spreader 
of this virus as far as where you're going to catch it is now the home. And a lot of that is because of asymptomatic people. So you could have 10, 15, 20 people there. One or two of them could be asymptomatic. And they could be in your family. And they could be living there. And you would never know. You don't cancel. You just use calculated risk at this point in time. It's hard because this year has been absolutely a blanking nightmare. We understand that. I think people are like at the point where like, well, let's just do this. As for me, I'm going to do pretty much. I haven't seen my family this year, and I'm not probably going to see him during the Christmas break, but I'm going to pick up my son, Jack. I'm not changing pretty much any of the stuff that I've done uh, before. Some of the stuff that's changed is because of where we are at this moment in time, things that we can't do because there's just not access to them. But I'm not going to change that. We may go see out my family for a day or so. Uh, but I have respect for my coworkers, my other local show that I do. Uh, my, my, my partner, he and his wife went down to, the, they went to Cabo for a week. It was, man, he says like, it's like a 600 room hotel. And there was like eight people there. He goes, we walked two miles on the beach and never saw another soul. But he's home this week because even though he's back, uh, because he's like, look, they want me to stay home, and so I respect that, and he's doing the show out of his house. It's it's just about having respect for other people, but you don't cancel. You're just selective and say, you know what, instead of having 40 people overnight, maybe we're just going to have 10 or 15 friends or family members that are close, that we know, that are, you know, 5, 10. You just, it's about being smart at this point in time. We're almost there, and the frustration level is huge. I get it. I think we all get it. But at this point in time, we're almost over the line. So let's just get over the line. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from you. Cyber attack, massive. What should Trump do and what will Biden do? Talk about that. Plus Moderna, they're getting us over the line. Talk about that as well. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I did, yes. So, you know, all of my staff... um, we are excited to get the vaccine. You know, um, we are in the COVID unit, so therefore, you know, my team will be getting first chances to get the vaccine. And I know that it's really. I'm sorry, I'm feeling really dizzy. There was a nurse in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She got the vaccine. She was talking about it. She's fine. Settle down. If if that happened to me, people would be like, Chad's playing around. I decided what would happen if I was going to do Am I going to come out and go, oh, you, I am my birds. But it's going to be fine, though. She's going to be fine. The allergic reactions. I know people asking questions about that. With the Moderna vaccine, um, they didn't seem to get the allergic reactions uh, that the Pfizer vaccine did. I wouldn't read too much into that because it's it's only been given to about 30,000 people in this clinical trial. Think about this for a second, though. We're going to, if all goes well, administer 150 million people, 200 million people, maybe. Kids under 18, most part, not going to get this. So we're going to administer a decent amount. You're going to have issues. Just want everybody to realize you're going to have allergic reactions. People die all the time from all kinds of things. People are allergic to all. So the thought process that you're going to give 200 million people something and it potentially, and you're not going to have some issues, would be foolish. Now, if 100 million people died, well, that would be an issue. If 100 million people got sick sick, that'd be an issue. But it just isn't going to happen. It is. It would be fine. But it was, you know, of all the times to pass out, 
TV, probably not one of the ones right after you got the shot. Mike Pence got the shot today. He will be fine. We need to get to what? Normalization. That's what we want. We want to get to a place where we're feeling like, hey, we're back. We're watching sports. I watched the NFL last night. Hell of a game, by the way. Here's the difference. Last night game was really good. Monday's night game was really good. In fact, arguably Monday night's game is was the best NFL game I have seen in a very long time. Part of the reason was the game itself. The other part, there was there was ambiance. There was crowds there. It wasn't it wasn't packed, but there was enough that it made a difference. Last night, the game was really really good. It was really exciting. It's the it's the Death Star, it's the Raiders. It's all, there was no crowd there. And it was weird, as good as it was. It just it, it 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 wasn't. It was still missing something, and the game was very very good, but it was missing something. We want to get back to a place of well, normalization. Where we're back, we're living our lives, we're doing the things, we're going to the movies, we're going to the sporting events, we're going to concerts, we're doing all of those things, and everybody's got a a time frame when they think it will happen. Some people it's 2022, some people it's the end of summer beginning of the you know the the fall uh some people it's it's you know this time next year do you think this time next year when you're both in the white house we will have what you could call a normal christmas i believe we'll be awfully close to that if not there i do believe yeah. that i think we'd be able to have because the combination in the first hundred days i'm going to ask everybody to wear a mask for a hundred days just a hundred days we're going to get those 100 million vaccinations out there and we're going to get to the place we can open schools it's not going to be quick but i think by next christmas will be close to normal and i think i think that's true i would like to think i would say if because yesterday I talked to uh, Dr. Will Humble, who uh, you see him all over. He's all over CNN's Fox, uh, the MSNBCs of the world talking about this. He used to run the health uh, department essentially out here in Arizona. And he and I were talking about this. He goes, you know, you we need 65 to 70 percent. It Really, 60 percent is that threshold. Where we're like, OK, we're sitting good. Some people tell you 70 or 80. But he goes, 60 percent is good. And he goes, think about this. We don't need 60 percent to get it because if you take the people that have already contracted it and then the tens of thousands and probably millions that have had it that didn't know they had it because they were asymptomatic you get to you arrive at that 50 to 60 percent rather quickly he goes you know he goes at 30 or 40 percent you're going to notice a difference in this he goes at fifty to sixty percent. It'll it it may still be here. You'll still flare ups here and there, but it will not be. It'll be just like a regular time, which is what we want to get back to. Because people are struggling, people are starving, people are trying to figure out how in God's name are they going to keep their lights on? How because the thirty first of this month, what happens? All the protection. For people with rent and in some states mortgages and a lot of that stuff, it goes away. People are in a position now where if you see the spending is down tremendously compared to where it was globally, which plays a lot into this because we're now a global kind of, uh, of society. And, you know, you've got restaurants that are getting crushed. This is uh, Chef Andrew Gruel, who is still pissed. I'm going to take your side on this one. I'm going to play this one through. Let's shut it all down. The restaurant industry, the entertainment industry, government offices, the governor's office, shut it all down. Any place where there's the opportunity to spread this deadly virus, shut it down. Airplanes, it's all done. Target, Amazon, big box stores, Walmart. Why don't we all just have fun? And he's saying that because he's frustrated. So what he's saying is if you're going to shut down my place shut down everybody's place if you're going to shut down me shut everybody down if you're going to say you can't work you know what nobody can do anything unless it's in your house period shut it all down and we'll put this thing to bed and here's how we do it okay give every single citizen the money to survive the revenue the paycheck the income that they would have lost in the midst of this two-week shutdown that i'm proposing here all the money goes directly to the citizens it doesn't go into government agencies where then it can trickle out into all of our best friends and all of these corporate donors give it directly to the citizens of the united states of america and let us make the decisions as to where we spend this money 
You know, because when they say, well, we're going to shut everything down, I mean, you can think about it. It's like if you make, uh, let's say you're in California and you're making 175000 a year. Well, if you're, in, if you're in a place like, you know, Cedar Rapids or, you know, somewhere like that or, or, or in Texas and, and you go, wow, you know, you're in McAllen, Texas, 175000 a year. Well, everybody's going to get $3,000 or $4,000. That's not paying your rent. That's not paying your bills in California. After taxes? After the state taxes, after what it costs to live there, it, it isn't the same. So if you're going to replace it, you could, you should replace it all. People are frustrated, being shut down all the time. They want to know what's coming next. You're going to give the people the money to survive? Are you going to hand it out? Because shutting down things one day, opening them up the next, you know, San Diego now, they're opening up because they went to courts, the restaurants went to court and said, hey, you guys are coming up with all these these rules based on no scientific evidence and you're shutting everybody down. And they're like, well, we better let them open up because they've asked, the, they, they've come with evidence. They've asked serious things that we don't have. And don't tell me the money doesn't exist. Why don't we tax Amazon, Target, Walmart, any of these big box stores? Small businesses in America, according to the SBA, pay roughly 20 to 25 percent in income tax yearly. Do you want to know what Amazon paid between 2016 and 2019? Less than 1 percent on trillions of dollars of revenue. Target, Walmart, no taxes. Small businesses, tons of taxes. So why don't we change the tax code? Change the tax code. I, 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 he, what he's saying is absolutely true. Now, in saying that, for years when Amazon lost billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, we have the tax code where if you invest a dollar today and you lose it, you're able to carry that loss over and write stuff down and take advantage of certain things. That's very true. We need to do something, though, to help out small business. And that people are looking at government to say all right what are you guys going to do when are we going to get that stimulus we are putting the final touches on what would be the largest stimulus in the history of the country with the exception of the cares act it'll be big it'll put some money in people's pockets everybody's arguing back and forth about whose fault it is i will note that had the republican majority joined in negotiations any time in the last six months as we had requested we would not be in the unfortunate position of negotiating against the government funding deadline. You're always every year. It's that way. Let's be real. Let's let's always be real about when when you know Schumer says, "Oh, we would not be in this situation." Yes, you would be, because you guys wait. I remember. I don't know this time last year, and then there was a year before that, and then it was a year before that. You're always up to some sort of deadline every single time. Every single time, there's still work to be done. It needs to get done. And this is where, you know, remember, Nancy wanted first it was it was three trillion. Then, it, you know, they've got it somewhere in the middle. I think both sides will feel like they got a little something and they probably felt like they gave up a little too much because we live in a world of all or nothing now. I'm c- encouraged that our Democratic colleagues have now embraced this framework. that has been the right solution for our country all this time. And a bipartisan, bicameral agreement appears to be close at hand. Yeah. We'll see. Mitch McConnell there. Possibility of it happening, I think, is real. Is it going to happen tomorrow? I think the reality is it'll probably happen. They'll get something, I'm sure, cut later on today. But the rest of it probably won't be done until this weekend and it probably won't hit Trump's desk until Monday, but it's still going to be several weeks before people get checks, six hundred dollar all checks in, in you know in the accounts and and extra money on unemployment and things like that because the first of the year is going to be really tough when we start seeing the numbers for what took place in the fourth quarter, what our GDP was for the entire year. It's going to be a shock to a lot of people's system. Then a lot of those protections, people are in, in dire financial needs, and they I think a lot of people thought, well, if we can make it through Christmas and our business is open, we're going to be able to survive, or if the business I work for is open. Will survive that just didn't happen and now that tsunami is going to arrive so those first few months on top of the getting people vaccinated and still the 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 crunch of what's happening with this is real so is going to be the financial fallout and that too is going to be a a national emergency three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter tweet at us text the program love hearing from you all right let's talk about wounded paw project 
Speaking of a great organization, you know, we, we talk all the time about the needs of the people. And Wounded Paw Project knew there was need for veterans. Veterans were coming home. They were struggling with PTSD, adjusting to what is normal life after being in combat was tough. Uh, plus, you, the, some of them were wounded, and they came up with a brilliant idea, all because they rescued a dog. They rescued a dog that was not a service dog, and it changed everything, and it changed everything. Now they rescue dogs that would be euthanized. They train them and get them to our first responders, veterans and their families, and help them out with things like adjusting to normal life, anxiety, families of first responders and veterans whose kids have autism and other things. It is amazing what they do. And on top of that, these animals get a gift at life that they never thought they would have. It's amazing. See what you can do. Give. If you have something to give this year, especially if you have an unwanted vehicle, you know, boat, RV, or like, I don't even know what to do with this. Get the great tax deduction and see what it does because it's saving a paw to save a life. The proceeds will be used to advocate, protect, and train these shelter dogs and take them to service dogs for veterans, first responders, and their family. Visit WoundedPawProject.org, WoundedPawProject.org to find out how you can help. WoundedPawProject.org. Wounded Paul, you'll be saving a paw to save a life. Chad Benson Show. I usually don't get into politics. As an ordinary suburban housewife, I feel a little disrespected. I teach my children not to name calls. You are a blabber! A blabber! Come on, man! Um, guys, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? Chad Benson. We're seeing a potential of 18,000 networks, both government and commercial, uh, that are held at risk. And so what's so scary about it is we could uh, you know, we could really wait to see any decision from the hackers, appear to be the Russians, on what they choose to do with those networks. So we're hacked. So there's that. 18,000. Apparently, they got in through some backdoor malware that was supposed to be that they got in with solar winds or something of this nature. I think that's what it's called. It's supposed to protect. You know, it's basically their McAfee. That's what we had. We had McAfee. We didn't have the good McAfee to stop this. Right? So we had that. And they got in. The Russians. And you're thinking, my God, it's just spying is everywhere. You want to know about spying everywhere? You know that TV you have? TCL TVs are sold everywhere from Walmart to Best Buy. Customers love them because they're cheap and also deliver solid quality. And they might have the ability to deliver your data to the Chinese government. That's the warning from the Department of Homeland Security, which says the People's Republic of China likely has influence over the TCL Technology Group and cites security blogs that discovered a backdoor into TCL Android TVs, which can be accessed remotely and be used to download system files from the TV that can include personal data. The more popular TCL Roku TVs appear not to be affected. <sighs> Even our TVs are spying on us. Even our TVs are spying on us. There's nothing you could do at this point in time. There's nothing you can do. You try. But if you've got something from China, there's a chance that it's spying on you. I'm just saying, there's a, there's a chance. There is a chance that it's spying on you. And I don't even, you could buy like uh, a bunch of paper for your for your printer, if you have one of those still. And then you look up and you're like, did you know that that paper is spying on you? It's made in China and the Chinese have access to all that paper. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. I sent an article early this morning saying, admit it. It felt good that Tom Cruise yelled at everybody for not social distancing and doing stuff. And I thought to myself, what a dumbass thing to say. You think it's cool that you treat people like crap? That That's it? So when somebody is uh, a Karen because they don't want to wear a mask, they're evil and bad. But when somebody loses their mind and screams at people, somebody who, by the way... has done this on more than a few occasions. He's lost 
several crew members who've quit over this, and it's not the first time. Apparently, this is an ongoing thing. He shut down the production and took an early Christmas break. No, no. Somebody, it's just, it's, it's, as much as we make fun of the Karens of the world who are out there, is, I'm not going to wear a mask. I don't have to wear a mask. Ta- I can't breathe and you're taking away my rights as a human being, which we think is stupid. The way that you treated people like that the other day, I'm sorry. But it's, it is funny the way that it's portrayed as if he's some sort of hero. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, there you go. What if it was a trans woman? Would you guys all feel the same if he was yelling at somebody like that? Just throwing it out there. I mean, we make everything about identity, don't we? No, it wasn't. And you could have took two people aside and talked to them. You could have thinned the herd. You could have had a fire on the spot immediately policy. Just throwing it out there. Just a thought. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Vice President Pence this morning will become the highest ranking government official to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Pence will roll up his sleeve and get the shot in front of cameras at the White House, an event aimed at promoting the safety of the vaccine and building confidence among Americans. His wife, Karen, and the Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, will also get a vaccine this morning. President-elect Joe Biden will get a vaccine as early as next week, while President Trump is not yet scheduled to get one. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. And Trump, I understand why Trump is, you know, the thought is, I just had it. So I got over it, just had it. It's not about that. It's the optics. People that listen to you, supporters. I think it would go a help, you know, a long way. And 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 helping some people who are hesitant because they think that maybe this isn't real or, you know, I mean, you, you know what I'm talking. Come on, let's not let's not beat around the bush. You know, they think it's it's deep state, it's evil, it's got chips inside of it, you don't need it, this thing isn't real, blah, blah. Whatever it is, it's about getting us back to normal. Let's remember. You don't have to believe this thing is real. You could think it's a giant hoax. Giant hoax or not, it affects you. The majority of us, and I'll get the, it doesn't affect me, because you're a 70-year-old man who's sitting at home and who's retired. Okay, fine. Doesn't affect you. But the majority of human beings, it affects. Whether they've been sick, somebody else in their family's been sick, they've lost somebody, or they've lost their job or seen their pay reduced to virtually nothing and them having to stand in line to get food. It affects people. It's about getting us back. He needs to get the shot. I don't know if he will. He should. Because of all the achievements, crushing of the caliphate, you know, the the, the ISIS destroying, the, remember that? The fact that he's pulled our soldiers out. Tremendously. He's not gotten us in any more wars. He has ridden an amazing economy that struggled over the last year because of this. All the other chaos, all of the other stuff, is what basically cost him the election. Trump, you know, I said yesterday, Trump and Biden, as far as this this race went for the presidency, Biden didn't win this. Trump lost it. But what he did in the courts and with regulations and a lot of different things, but especially this, he needs to take it. He does. The White House will say, well, the president had COVID-19 in October and he has antibody protections. Question, of course, is how long does that last? But there's a new element to this. The treatment that the president got that very few people in this country uh, received, what he got back in October at Walter Reed, the CDC guidelines on that say if you got that treatment, you should wait 90 days before getting a vaccine. The president's not yet out of that window. So there you go. 
but you need to be front and center. And he's not front and center. I'm not quite sure what he got. I don't think any. We're still trying to figure. He got something. Like, hey, you remember you got that thing? Don't worry about it. We got a shot for you. You'll be fine. We can't tell everybody else. We already got a shot. You need to be front and center, though. And he hasn't been. A tweet here, a tweet there, but he's too busy fighting the election, trying to win an election that is that 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 it's gone. It is, and I, and and I say it because I'm a realist. It's over. So we move on, but you've got accomplishments that you should be standing on right now. You've got accomplishments that you should be touting, and one of them is this, and this is a huge accomplishment. A massive accomplishment. If you're going to get the blame, and I, everybody's like, well, Trump didn't do anything. Let me tell you something. If you're going to blame Trump for everything, then you got to give him credit for stuff, too. You can't just have it one way. If you're going to blame him for stuff, you got to give him credit. Oh, he handled this. He fumbled this. He screwed this whole thing up. Well, this came on his watch, too. Stop fighting the election at this point in time. Start being the president that you want to be and you wanted to be, and at times you were, especially if you have eyes on getting back here in 2024. Don't know if he will. I'm going to say, nah, probably not. But he should. He should push all of his accomplishments. He should get out there and lead for the next 30-plus days and leave with your head high. But I don't know if he will. And I think America needs it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. All the while that's happening. Yeah. Big security breach. Not just a big one. Huge. Biggest of all time kind of security breach. ABC News confirms the Energy Department's Nuclear Security Agency, which oversees the nuclear weapons stockpile, has been breached. According to the department, the hack impacted non-classified systems and not those involving national security functions. But intelligence officials acknowledge the hack, quote, poses a grave risk to federal and local governments as well as critical infrastructure. Sources say the breach allowed Russians to view emails of U.S. officials apparently going undetected for nearly six months. Longer than that, actually. Apparently, they were in there for nine months. And now we're in a situation where what's next? It's got to be something. There has to be something. We were breached in the largest cyber attack in history. They were in there for a long time, just hanging out, checking stuff out. 18,000 agencies and private companies, they're in there checking stuff out. This is the largest espionage attack in history. This is as though the Russians got a pass key, a skeleton key, for about half the locks in the country. Yeah, it's 18,000 companies and uh, government institutions scattered around the U.S. and the world. This is an espionage attack. As far as we know, the reason they got in was to steal information from the U.S. government. Of course that's what they were doing. Now, the Russians being the Russians, like, we did nothing. We never did nothing. You know that. One of the things, though, is it's it's a test. Trump and his administration have spent four years fighting Russia, Russia, Russia. And the BS that went with that. And out of those four years, Putin has sat idly by. He's laughed. He's giggled. He's He's hinted. And Trump has been very tough on Russia. You don't believe me? If you want to research it yourself, go take a look at how hard Trump has been on Russia. Putin's a different story, but on Russia, he has been extremely hard. But also, we get these every time there is a administration switch. Why? Well, let's test the new guy. What's the new guy all about? Let's push him. Let's test the new guy. Let's see what he's all about. And see if we can get something out of him. See if we can get a rise out of him. 
How long is this going to last? What else is going on? No one knows how deep the damage truly is. And authorities are trying to determine if the hack allows the Russians to actually control computer networks. This threat is so huge, it's being described as, quote, a campaign that poses grave risk to not only the federal government, but to states, private companies, and the nation's infrastructure. And it's ongoing. One top-ranking Democrat in the Senate calling it a virtual invasion. Yeah, and it is. I love, you know, Romney was was very open about this and, and painted a picture about it that's that's really like if you need a picture, like trying to understand because it's cybersecurity, it's nerd stuff, you're hack. Like, oh my goodness, this this is his like this just paints the picture of of how big this is. A cyber hack of this nature is really the modern equivalent of Russian bombers reportedly flying undetected over the entire country. They didn't drop bombs, but they had the capacity to show that our defense is extraordinarily inadequate, that our cyber warfare readiness is uh, extraordinarily weak, that they think so little of our ability to, to fight back from a cyber standpoint that they do this with impunity. So our national security is extraordinarily vulnerable. It is. And now we have to do something. Trump's been pretty quiet about this. He has. And when people inside of the administration or any of the stuff that gets out, it's never rarely is it with with Trump at the helm. He should be out in front of this thing saying, you know what? We're taking a look. There will be repercussions. There needs to be repercussions. In this setting, not to have the White House aggressively speaking out and protesting and taking a punitive action is really, really quite extraordinary. It absolutely is. Dick Durbin. This president has been silent. I can't understand why he hasn't spoken out. He was silent as well when it came to bounties on the heads of American soldiers by Russians. I I just don't understand it. This is where Trump, where are you? Still trying to get out there, still trying to figure out how to overturn this election, still trying to figure out what they can do. What's the what's the next Hail Mary of, you know, of Hail Marys? I get that. But along the way. This happened along the way. This took place along the way. Things are still going on in the world that need to be taken care of. Where are you? Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. 110% love and hate. I get both. I'm okay with both. I'm okay with both. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, look, when people get mad, I never begrudge them their anger and their emotion. I think that's the stupidest thing to do. I just say, are you interested in conversations or are you interested in fighting? Because you're interested in conversations, I'm always there for a conversation. If you just want to scream, yell, and fight, and I think what a lot of what it is is you just really want to you want to blow off steam because you're mad. And I'm easy because, oh, Chad, you're criticizing the president. How dare you? No, he's a human being. Every human being. I get criticized all the time. Every human being will do something. And, yeah, they can be deserving of criticism. And people put themselves in positions to be criticized. You can't tell me that, you know, why are you not speaking up? Why are you not even talking? You don't have to accuse her, but why are you not talking about this? Where are you in this? Seriously, not just a tweet here and a tweet there. When's the last time you even saw him? uh, Producer Phil, when's the last time you saw Trump even hold a press conference or speak? It's been a long time. It's been a long, long, long time. All right, kids. Car Shield, you're heading 2021. You're unsure. You're unsure, kids, about, well, you know, your car. You're like, I don't know if I'm going to get a new car. I might want to hold on to this thing, but I don't have a warranty. That's what Car Shield comes in. 24-7 roadside assistance, a rental car for free while your car's in the shop. That check engine light comes on, you panic. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? Well, I'll take it to my favorite mechanic. And if something is wrong, Car Shield's got my back. I pay a small deductible. They get them paid. That's awesome. That's why you got to love Car Shield. They get plans start as low as $99 a month. They've helped over a million drivers. They're the number one auto protection company in America. That is awesome. Whether your car has 5,000 or 150,000 miles on it, whether it's more modern with electronics or it's a little bit older, they can help you. Call them up. Be specific in what it is that you're looking for. 800 665 2157. 
Use code Benson to save 10% or go to carshield.com, carshield.com. Use that code Benson to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? All right, kids and kittens, boys and girls, friends of all ages. Check it out on the magical world of Google. See what's trending in the Google search. Coming to America too. It's trending big time yesterday. If you guys haven't seen it, they released the first pictures. Uh, and everybody's back. Even Louis Anderson is back. Just about everybody who was in the original is back. Same characters are back as well. But there's a picture of, uh, was it, what's his name, Simi and, and Akeem. Played by, you know, Simi was Arsenio Hall, and Akeem, of course, was uh, Eddie Murphy. And my God, they look almost exactly alike. It is insane. It's like, as far as what they used to look like. You go back, because that movie's 32 years old, and it lo- they look almost exactly like their characters from 32 years ago. They, look, they haven't aged at all. We should all be so lucky. Tiger Woods, if you haven't seen yesterday... Uh, we're going to touch on this in a little bit. Him and his uh, son, Charlie, who's 11, playing in a, a tournament, and they were warming up together. And i tell you what, man, at 11, oh, it's like watching a mini him play. Eminem dropped a new surprise album last night. What? Yeah. And people are asking the question, is Dolly Parton the voice of America? Somebody needs to be. Oh, you want me to be? I I just had a donut. Somebody else. Russia is trending on Twitter because of what took place. The cyber attacks. Moderna. Also. Trending. Pfizer says it has millions of doses of COVID-19 in warehouses with no additional instructions for delivery. Caliphate. Turned out to be Caliphate. If you don't know what that is, Caliphate was this award-winning Times podcast. You know, one of those deep dive like podcasts where they're like, it's, you know, it's kind of like, hey, we're going to do It's like a giant news story that goes on. It's like a documentary that is podcast with seasons. Well, it turned out to be fake. The person who was supposedly the ISIS executioner that they had all this opportunity to hang out and talk with and do all this stuff with. Apparently he was a, he was full of it. (laughs) So New York times doing a big mea copa. So sorry. You have to apologize. Just shows you though. Do you, how well do you know the people that you, you trust, you know, that you're going to get stuff from how well do you know them? It is what it is. You got caught. I don't even think you get caught. You got duped. There's a difference. You got duped. You didn't get caught. You got duped. You got duped by somebody. You you got millied vanillied is the best way to describe it. You got millied vanilla. If you guys don't know who Millie Vanilli is, A, you either weren't paying attention in the late 80s, early 90s, or you're really young. And thanks for listening to the show. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
Merck's authorization for the Moderna vaccine. I think the vote was 20 to 0 with one abstention. Uh, Dr. Hildreth, why did you vote yes? I voted yes because the data that was presented to us was very strong. The efficacy was consistent across all the age groups. They included people with chronic conditions, which is really important. They also had data and, and people over 65. And I think the safety package that was put in front of us was acceptable, more than acceptable. So given where we are in the pandemic, I felt compelled to vote yes on this, and this very strong result from Moderna. So Moderna yesterday got the check across the board. The difference between Moderna and Pfizer, Pfizer needs to be kept at a very, very, they need special places to keep it. Moderna needs to be refrigerated, but it doesn't need to be as cold. Uh, And both need shots. Moderna is, so Pfizer is three weeks in between. Moderna, I think, is a month. The difference between Moderna and Pfizer, though, is Pfizer is a much larger company. So they'll be able to get this out in a much quicker, faster way. Moderna already has six million dosages that will be going out more than likely i would say in the next 72 hours they'll be on the road so by monday they'll be being shipped out which will help very similar almost identical in a lot of ways that this thing has been done and i know what people say how can they do this when they can't solve this and they can't solve that understand like you look at cancer cancer mutates does a lot of different things and attacks your body in a lot of different ways OK, it, it, it it's much different. This virus that's out there is very similar to SARS. COVID or coronavirus has been around for a long time. When I talked to the scientists and the doctors, they said, look, they're not reinventing the wheel. In fact, this is very similar to SARS. And the other thing is it just doesn't mutate. You know, the, the reason that the, the flu shot's a little bit different, because every year it mutates a little bit, and you're trying to guess to which strain of the flu that they're going to get. This just doesn't do that. So it wasn't hard. Moderna said they cracked it in 48 hours. They had the vaccine cracked. And then it was, you know, of what they were going to do, and then it was just putting it through the paces. So that'll be getting out there. And then it's up to everybody else. As far as when we get vaccine, if you want to get vaccine, I will never tell you to get vaccine or get a shot or not to. That's a you thing. I'll never tell you who to vote for. I'll never tell you whether or not you should or shouldn't do something. I'll give you my opinion based on the facts and the evidence. But you do what's right for you. The data that was presented to us was striking in its efficacy and across the groups that they did get to test. This was a fairly large study and the safety compelled us to make this positive vote. And I think that most people will see that this is really the path that we need to move forward. Mm-hmm. And so I would just say to um, individuals that this is not a virus that you want to get infected with, but you want to gain protective immunity in this safer fashion. Yeah. So the Moderna, you're not getting, there's nothing in there. You're not going to get the coronavirus from it. Are there risks? There's risks with everything. We're going to have 100 million people, you know, 100 million, probably 200 million dosages. They're going to go out there that, yeah, so there's going to be some issues. Let's not pretend that there won't, but that, that's on anything that you do. People are allergic to aspirin. People are allergic to water. People are allergic to, you know, all kinds of things. So there will be some stuff, and people are going to ask the questions, how, if I want to find out stuff about it? Because that's always a good thing. Do your homework. And what makes it feel like, hey, I've made an informed decision, which we don't do anymore. Let's be real. We do not do that anymore. Whether it is with voting, with any of the stuff that we do, our politics, mostly, we do very little information gathering. Pretty much everything we do is all about affirmation and emotion. Saying about a third of healthcare workers say they would absolutely get it. A third wanted still more information, and a third say that they won't get it right now. Dr. Gans, what do you make of data like that? What would you say to people right now, especially in that middle group, who say they just want more information? Really, once people see how efficacious and safe these vaccines are, the side effects that we're seeing are likely side effects that people will have if they were to become ill with the disease. So these can still be preventative. They can still be less mild. Yeah. So, but it's up to 
you to do your homework. What makes you feel comfortable. Some people are going to not take this based on the fact that they think, for whatever reason, they're going to catch something, something's going to happen to them, uh, that they're going to be traced by the government, or they're going to get whatever it is. Some people are going to take it. They want information. They want to see more information because it's coming at them fast. Now, you've got AstraZeneca and Oxford and Johnson and Johnson. The people I've talked to, most people are interested in the AstraZeneca one next as maybe the 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 other big leader along with this and their technology is new and what they're doing is new this isn't really new technology it's just the fact that we have gotten i I spoke to a doctor yesterday uh who was kind enough to come on he works at banner health out here he's a pediatrician and he was kind enough to come on he got it's a shot he said you know here's the thing we have advanced so far with technology just in the last five years and with where we're going that things that would have taken us years, we can do now in months and weeks. It's just usually the hurdles that you have to get over of time. So it's it's like anything else. Like if I told you today, hey, you you, I'm going to give you unlimited access to resources, and I want you to do whatever it is that you want to do. And you've always said to yourself, man, I'd love to do this, or I'd love to do that. I'd love to. And you had no hurdles and no worry about getting something, you know, do I have time to do this? Because that's what this was. And you were already kind of doing it anyways. But now you have unlimited access to go and do it. And you can focus on it all day long. You'd probably get it done. And you'd probably build something cool. You'd probably do something cool. That's what they did. That's it. That's what they did. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Now, the other side of it, the economy. Struggling tremendously. Numbers yesterday for jobs weren't great. They were ugly. We're coming to the end of the year, the fourth quarter. Christmas time was supposed to be a boom. We still have a weekend and three more days, four more, five more. So we got seven days. But we've got this big weekend here to get some shopping done. And what's going to happen? How is that going to play itself out? Are we going to have an end-of-the-year rush that gives some people hope to saving off the destruction of their business? And what about the government side of it? Places still closed down. Places still at half capacity, no capacity. You know, I mean, you know, places that... And, and, you know, we talk about restaurants, but think about this. For the mom-and-pop shops in America... The boutiques, the little things like that. They weren't set up for the curbside pickup. They weren't set up for some of these things that other places could easily adapt to. They weren't set up for things like that. And they're in a limited capacity, and the struggle has been very real for them. It's how fast can we get anything done when it comes to a stimulus? Will it happen? Won't it happen? Mitch McConnell. I'm even more optimistic now that... I was last night that a bipartisan bicameral framework for a major rescue package is very close at hand. And I think it is close. How close? Probably this weekend. They'll get something done this weekend. It'll probably get to Trump. I'm assuming by Monday he'll sign it. It'll stave off the, you know, oh, we're going to head to a shutdown. You You know, every year we scream, oh, God, this is where we go. All of that stuff. We'll get to that point where we're going to be, you know, fine. It's what does it look like at the end? You're hearing everything from you're going to get 600 bucks to you're going to get 500 bucks to you're going to get a thousand bucks, 1200. I think it's going to be most likely 600 with an extra 300 in for unemployment federally to go along with your state's unemployment. It's not going to be that 600 a week again, but it is better than a kick in the teeth. And there's going to be some other stuff in there as well. But at the end of the day, the best thing to do is to get our economy back, and the best way to do that is to get through this nightmare of a year with coronavirus and move forward. That's the best thing, absolutely, is people working, the economy flowing, people paying taxes, rebuilding their lives, staving off the Grim Reaper when it comes to being evicted, losing their home, their business, It's working. That's what it is. That is the vaccine 
to this nightmare that is the economic collapse. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Trump loses again in the Supreme Court. President Trump wants to exclude undocumented immigrants from population totals used to allocate congressional districts. But trying to stop him at this stage, the Supreme Court said, is premature. The 6-3 to three decision allows the Secretary of Commerce to tell the president the feasibility of excluding nearly 11 million undocumented immigrants from apportionment. The justices did not address the merits of the opposition, so the door is open to future challenges. But at this point, the justices said the case does not present a dispute appropriately resolved through the judicial process. Still open. Will it happen? Probably not. Much like with the voting thing. Is there opportunity to look into some issues that were done voting wise? Absolutely. I've always said that, but that's a long term thing. For Trump supporters, it's not about the next election or the next election or the next election. It's about this election and specifically it's about Trump. They're there for Trump. They don't care about congressmen and women in the Republican Party that picked up seats. They don't care about a lot of different things that happened statewide in elections and gubernatorial elections. They don't care. About, they care about Trump. And they feel that the election was stolen from him. Well, if you feel that, you've got to prove that. And to prove that, you're going to need time. It's not going to be an overnight thing. I always want a postmortem after every election to see what we did good and bad. And we should always be looking into anything where there may be, if not irregularities, that were nefarious in nature, things that happened that were human error, so we can fix them. We should always want that. But those are a time thing. Is somebody going to pick this up on the other side with Biden and rechallenge some of these things when it comes to the census? Because it does matter. Because if you have a bunch of you're counting everybody that's here. Right. You're counting everybody that's here. And based on that is congressional seats. Well, if you got more congressional seats, you expand the Congress. Chances are that's a win for the Democrats. But it's also a win for states and cities where they get more federal money. So there's a lot that goes into this. But is anybody going to pick it up on the other side? It's the same thing. When all this is said and done and, 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 and you know, the president-elect Biden gets sworn in on that day, when everything's said and done, if you're still serious about the election and you want to look into the integrity of the election, you better continue to do it. But I have a feeling most of the people, once this is said and done, they're going to be done with it. And they won't dig deeper. And I'm not saying there's anything there. I do not believe there's any there there. And I'm looking at the court cases and I'm talking to a lot of people on a daily basis. I've not seen that. Pisses people off when I say that, but I just go with, you know, again, if if you're 0 for 60 and we're playing baseball and you're telling me you're a great hitter, I'm going to have to look at the numbers and say, I don't think you are. The same. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Hello, fresh, amazing, number one meal kit in America. 23 chef curated recipes each and every single week. So what does this mean? So you choose from three different options, vegetarian, low calorie, and family friendly. They get all their food sourced directly from the growers. It's contact free, delivered to your door. You get a card, a recipe card with the directions and pictures, and you go from there. You're saving money about 40% versus shopping at the grocery store. On top of that, It's no food waste. You cut down by about 25% because everything's portioned perfectly. It is delicious. I love my meals. It is. uh, uh, We're out of meals right now because we went a little overboard on on, on a few of the things. And I've got meals coming. But I tell you what, I've had just about everything that they have in the family side. and, and, And through the year, they change stuff up. So it's not like the same thing. So, you know, during the summertime, you get a little bit more light, a little fresh. You know, right now, they got meatloaf and all this stuff. It's awesome. It truly is. You will love it, love it, love it. Go to HelloFresh.com. Use promo code Benson. $80 off, including free shipping. It takes about 20 minutes to make these meals. You're going to love them. HelloFresh.com. Promo code Benson. $80 off and free shipping. HelloFresh.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Me 
2022. Hashtag immigration reforms. Hashtag help. I'm trapped in a hashtag factory and I can't get out. The Chad Benson Show. It's just so cool for me to see him enjoying the sport yeah. um, and feeling the shots and hitting it as you know, solid as, as he's doing now. Tiger Woods, PNC Championship. It's uh, it's pros and amateurs playing together, and usually it's a family event. So you, the juniors are playing, if you will. So you got like Greg Norman and his son, Greg Norman Jr. But Tiger brought out Charlie, his 11-year-old son, and soak it up every minute of it. We've been talking about uh, having this opportunity to play with 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 one another, and uh, it all worked out. And we're here, and uh, <laughs> it's just so exciting to be able to you know, be a, a part of something, you know, with with, with my, my my son, and and just have this opportunity like this. The kid's a beast, by the way. If you watch, and yesterday was there was film everywhere of the two of them together. And, you know, like like LeBron. LeBron, his goal now, his his legacy is cemented. His goal is to play long enough that his son's in the NBA, either to play with him or against him. And it'll be with him. He, he he's, he's signed a contract long enough that he'll be a free agent the year that potentially Bronny, everybody calls him LeBron's son, will be eligible for the NBA draft. And that if he's chosen, you're going to get LeBron, who will probably still, based on the health of him, uh, uh, at least a pretty damn good player. That's a pressure that uh, you can't even imagine. Like while you, like while your dad or your mom or whoever is a professional athlete and is big, you know, that's a tough thing to follow in that kind of footsteps. And it does give you advantages in certain areas. I think the advantages are bigger if your if your if your parents were successful but not superstars. Cuz if they're superstars I think it changes everything. And that the pressure of of him like Tiger Woods kid Charlie being a, a stud. And by the way, at 11, he would smoke probably 95% of the planet in golf. And he looks just like his dad. He's a little bit smaller. But that pressure always, everywhere you go, being completely looked at and compared to your dad, and even if you go on and you have a great career, just, that's a tough thing, man. That is a tough thing. It's cool. Great opportunities. But you have that name on your back. Do you want to be Emilio Estevez or Charlie Sheen? (laughs) Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Oh, happy it's Friday. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's been a hell of a, it's been a hell of a year. Can we just all kind of wrap our heads around this year? Next week we're we're working a short week, and then we're gonna be off uh, all the way till the third. Take some. Honestly, some much needed time. I, I work a lot of hours and it's it's but it's been a hell of a year. I think we should be we look back at this year. This I I, I was telling my son Jack. So for those of you who don't know, my son Jack is ten and we were chatting uh when he was out here about a month ago. And I'll pick him up the day after Christmas and he'll be out here for about a month. And yeah, we're talking about I'm like, you're living through history. I mean, we're always living through history. But not all the history makes the books, if you will. Not all the history is the history that you remember. But I was telling him, you're living through history. You're living through a time in history that hundreds of years from now, thousands of years from now, yeah, you know, trillions. Of, but 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 hundreds of years from now, people will much like we look back on on things that have taken place in the past, like a hundred years ago, the pandemic. So people are going to talk about, look, look, this is what took place in 2020. 
on a just a, a an exhausting note, the election was exhausting. We started the year out with one of the fabled athletes in 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 American sports history dying of a helicopter crash to getting a pandemic arriving on our shores and going from virtually nothing to something and watching the entire globe come to a screeching halt to a contentious election that in some some corners of this country is still being fought out to a massive depression to the canceling of our our lives in many cases in just about everything we do been a hell of a year I'll tell you that it has been one of those things where if you take a deep breath and you look back you'll be like wow what was that the end of it though here we are still here still fighting still doing our thing and that's a good thing that is a good thing time to keep ourselves moving realize the light is at the end of the tunnel we're going to get there how soon do we get there? I think it's going to be several months, but I do believe that three months from now, we're going to be in a much better. The Probably the next four to six weeks can going to be tough. Yesterday, California's levels were so high as far as their infection. Now, what you need to look at is the infection rate. The infection rate is, is really important. So, But California yesterday... If it was its own nation, it would have been the third largest infection rate. The rest of America and Brazil. California, for every 10 people infected with coronavirus, California has one. So... But it's the it, the infection rates are the things that are most important. And right now, as high as it is, California infection rates only nine percent. I'm here in Arizona. Our infection rate this week's been about eighteen twenty percent. So those are the things you look for: ICU and hospitalizations. And infection rates. But California is a hotspot. It would have been the third largest infection rate in the entire globe. So that means that yesterday having five, uh, 50,000 or so, give or take, positivity, I mean, positive tests, 500,000 people got tested. It's a lot of people being tested. How fast can we get the vaccines out? That's the important thing. When can we get them out? Well, We're going to get them out fast. Moderna was approved yesterday by the independent panel. So they so the way that they've done all of these things when it comes to the the what we're rolling out, Pfizer, Moderna, is they brought in a third party panel of people. So these are people that have nothing to do with the government, per se, and have nothing to do with any of these, uh, you know, Pfizer, Moderna. They're doctors and they take a look at all of the data, and then they vote. It's authorization for the Moderna vaccine. I think the vote was 20 to 0 with one abstention. Well, uh, Dr. Hildreth, why did you vote yes? I voted yes because the data that was presented to us was very strong. The efficacy was consistent across all the age groups. They included people with chronic conditions, which is really important. They also had data and, and people over 65. And I think the safety package that was put in front of us was acceptable, more than acceptable. So given where we are in the pandemic, I felt compelled to vote yes on this, on this very strong result from Moderna. Yep. So they're not as big as Pfizer, so there's not going to be as much of it, but it's going to get out there. Probably you'll have the CDC and the uh, uh, FDA, I think the FDA hears it today, the CDC will it tomorrow, they'll kind of usher it through. And I would assume in the next 48 to 72 hours, they've said they have 6 million dosages ready to go. Pfizer's saying we've got millions of dosages inside of warehouses. What do we do with them? Why, aren't, why isn't there any plan? I think it's a very fair question to ask, what's going on with that? It's time to get these things out there. It's time to get us moving forward and getting us to- towards that herd immunity, which is essentially what this does. This brings us to herd immunity faster than actually having the herd immunity. 
And I think we'll get there. But I tell you what, you've still got other issues. And those issues are what's happening with the economy. Are we any closer to a stimulus? Are we going to get to a stimulus soon? Mitch McConnell. I'm even more optimistic now that I was last night that a bipartisan bicameral framework for a major rescue package is very close at hand. How close? I think they're very close. I think it'll be, I think by Monday we'll have this done or Tuesday because they want to get it. Wednesday is kind of when they'd like to get out of there. So know this, when you put a deadline like this in front of people who don't want to be there, they'll figure out a way to get out. They're tired. They're over it. They want to get the stimulus done. They want to get the bill done so they don't have to shut down the government. They don't want, they, they just want to go. So they have a deadline and that deadline is probably Wednesday. And the reason for that is because they want to start their holiday. They'll be there this weekend. The whole thought is they would like to get out of there as soon as this is done. And if they could have got it done today, they would have taken their recess. But there'll probably be some battling back and forth. There's going to eventually be, you know, okay, this is what you get. And when you look into the bill, that could change. $600 stimulus check, an extra 300 bucks unemployment from the feds. And so a lot of other stuff that, that, that you will peel the onion back and see. But that's kind of where it is. Is it perfect? No. Nothing ever is perfect. For some people, it's never enough. They want a $1,000 a week. They want all. It's, it's, it's never enough. Should this have been done months ago? Yes. Did the Republicans drag their he- heels when they had a chance? Absolutely. Did the Democrats ask for things that were ridiculous? 100%. At the end of the day, they'll get something done. But it's going to be several weeks before people start seeing those checks arrive. And people are frustrated because this has been an awful year. And for many businesses out there, mom and pop shops up to 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 smaller, medium size, even larger local businesses, they're most of them are feeling the pinch in some way, shape or form. Even if 80 percent of us are employed. Doesn't mean we don't feel the pinch. Because we absolutely do. This isn't the nick of time. And for some, it will help out tremendously. But for some, it's 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 their months behind where they need to be. And they're going to be digging out for the foreseeable future. And we're still not at that point where we're going to be ready to roll back to normal way of life, which could be a year I, I think I think we'll be 85%. I've been saying about 80% to 85% by the middle to end of summer. But I still think we're going to have a few months before we're back there. And, you know, maybe 90 95% this time next year. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. And if you haven't heard, we were hacked big, big, big time. And we know who it is, pretty much. Everybody's pointing at the Russians and saying, look what you guys did. And boy, did you do something. And you hacked into a lot of our stuff. And we're talking a lot. There are as many as 18,000 individual entities, both private and and government, that have been compromised here. Yeah. Nuclear. They were in there for months They said they were in there for as long as nine months, but six, seven months where they were looking around at everything from emails to who knows what. People, I think, are surprised about how big this is. It's the largest cyber breach in history, not even close, that we know about. Remember, we're also cyber sleuths. So no matter how bad this is, If we did something this big to Russia and China, which I'm sure we have, at the end of the day, they're never going to tell us that. They're never going to let us know that because, well, that's they keep everything very close to the vest. But it's a big deal. I mean, they're looking at our nuclear secrets. They're looking at a lot of stuff. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. All that being said, it's a test for Biden, 100%. Trump, a little bit silent. 
What are you going to do on the way out? There needs to be some sort of repercussion and acknowledgement, which there hasn't been really. In this setting, not to have the White House aggressively speaking out and protesting and taking a punitive action is really, really quite extraordinary. I agree with Mitt Romney. Where are you? Still trying to fight the election. I get that. You can do a lot of different things at once. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter. My pillow is awesome. The my pillow that started it all, right? So this is the one. Twenty nine ninety eight. Normally it's sixty nine ninety eight. That's a huge savings. It's a forty dollars savings. King size five dollars more. This is the one that started it all. Give yourself the gift this year, two thousand twenty one, of sleeping better. It's never going to go flat. Right? She washable and dryable. They've extended sixty eight money back guarantee as well, well into two thousand twenty one. And they've got other great deals. Now, how do you get this deal? Well, it's simple. You go to mypello dot com. Click on the radio listener special. Use the promo code Benson. You're going to find amazing offers, deep discounts. It's great on things like their Giza bed sheets, their mattress toppers, everything. I love all of my products. I have my Snow and Go Anywhere pillow when I need to travel. And my my pillow, I go home, I crash out on them, sleep, and they don't go flat. They are amazing. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. States? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. It's a ruling that's being immediately appealed to a higher court by San Diego County and the state of California. Judge in San Diego County, barring enforcement of state and county health orders that shut down live entertainment and in-person dining at restaurants. Ruling even strip clubs that brought the suit can reopen in San Diego as COVID-19 is exploding in California. The judge saying no evidence has been shown connecting open restaurants and entertainment venues to the spread of COVID. Wait, what? You, I love who, who brought the suit? Strippers. <laughs> At the end of the day, who saves us? It's the strippers. Because when they started closing stuff in places like California, restaurants immediately said, like L.A. County was the perfect example. So they go and they vote to shut all of the rest, including outdoor dining down. So outdoor dining, shut down. Okay. So it shut down. Based on what science? We have this right here, this study. This study is from New York several months ago on indoor dining. And the judge is like, that's that's not this. People are frustrated. They're angry. They're pissed. Yeah, because they're losing everything. And the strippers are there to fight. The strippers are there to fight. The strippers are there to push back. Yes, they are. Because they don't want this crap anymore. No, no, no. Here's the situation. Do we take the pandemic seriously? Of course we do. Am I saying that we shouldn't close outdoor dining? Yes, I am. At every single juncture along the way here from the beginning of the day, we've listened to all of the advice from our government officials only to be shut down over and over and over again and then not compensated for the elements that we put in place in our businesses in order to protect our customers. We shut down indoor dining. No problem. I got a warehouse full of plexiglass right now, okay? Yeah. Yeah, but but you shouldn't be. That's that that's slapfish uh, seafood being shut down all the time. That's the owner pissed off. Why? Well, you ask me to do all these things to help to adapt, and I do. Then you shut us down anyways. So not only have you kicked me in the grundle when I've fallen down, you decided to double kick me in the grundle and say, nah. Because I need to do this. Because I can do this. Not because it's based on stuff that we've looked at. And even though we've told you to do all these things and you did it, eh, we don't care. We went outdoors, all right? Now that's getting shut down. I just put thousands of dollars into outdoor heaters. There is zero scientific evidence that proves that outdoor dining is contributing to a rise in cases related to this, all right? I am only saying that we are going to continue dining outdoors because I can get on an airplane and I can fly and eat and do whatever I want. And don't tell me it's the HIPAA filters, okay? Because that's not the case. You don't turn those on until you get onto the plane. Before that, everybody's on top of each other. It's calculated risk in life. 
at the end of the day, it's about a calculated risk. You take calculated risk in life. Eating outdoor, you know what? I'll take that risk. Having my family members come over, a select few. Some friends. I'll take that risk. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not. We can be common sense oriented in this without being ridiculous. But the rush to always want to save everybody and everything from every single thing, including people who, you know what? Doesn't matter what you do. They're still going to do something stupid. We need to stop protecting the stupid. It's common sense, people. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Today's elected leaders bear a tremendous responsibility to be the custodians of our young and fragile democracy. And make no mistake, our democracy has been battered and bruised, but it is not yet broken. And to save it, we must agree on one basic truth, that the other side is not the enemy. The enemy is the stubbornness of our own biases. The enemy is a political system that seeks to divide us for sport. Let's fight that and not each other. Outgoing rep, South Carolina, Joe Cunningham. Given his bye-bye speech yesterday on the floor. Absolutely right. Other side's not the enemy. By the way, there's no other side. There's just us. You're not somehow a different American than somebody else. You have a different thought, some different beliefs. He lost re-election last month, tight race. One of the seats that the Republicans picked up. And it's just interesting what he said. And I, and I love the fact is, look, the other side's not our enemy. It's not. And then he did this. Our country's facing some serious issues right now. And our country would be much better served if Democrats and Republicans could come together. And my grandfather always told me that you can get through about any problem if you actually sit down with somebody and have a beer together. I've been trying to work with people since the first day I got here. I won't ever stop reaching across the aisle, sitting down and having a beer and listen to each other. For the betterment of this country, we have to come together. We have to sit down and listen to each other. The spirit of the bipartisanship and cooperation, I raise this glass to my colleagues, both Democrats and Republicans. I love it. I love it. Cracked open a beer? Yeah. It's needed. We need some of that. You know, I every day I deal with... With people who they they see me, everybody's always trying to put me into a box. Yeah. Oh, you're an MSN liberal. I'm like, let me tell you guys this for the thousandth time. I don't watch CNN. Right. I don't. the The only time any of those things are on is when I go into the other studio where we have four TVs, uh, and three of, they allow me to have my own special TV that I can view when I'm doing my my local show, which I love. And usually, right now, I've got it on the Hallmark Channel. When golf's on, I'll have it on golf, or I'm watching Gunsmoke. The other three are just there because there's TVs around it. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch Fox. I don't watch One American News or Newsback. I research that I do. I do stories that interest me. And I think would interest you. Times are changing. People are frustrated and they're angry, and everything has become political, and we've lost the opportunity. To even find common ground. And screw the common ground. Common ground's on something we disagree with. Well, let's find our common ground. We've lost where we can even have a conversation about things that unite us. Things that we enjoy. Things that are hobbies. We've we've lost that part of us. You would have to think, oh my God. How do we get here? Well, the reality is, is most of us haven't lost that. The the news media makes it feel like that. And the media 
again, I the, I don't care what the media says. I always hear, oh, did you hear what, you know, because I have people who, who are super supporters of Trump. For four years, the media. I'm like, dude, I, do you really care? Has, has the media changed your mind about Trump? No. Even the people I know that have said, you know what, I couldn't vote for Trump again. What's in the media? It was the exhaustion of Trump. And the lack at times of 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 the political aspect and wonkiness that some people liked. The media is uh, who pays attention to them. Really, I mean, and and the funny thing is, is they'll have you believe that we're completely divided. We're not. We're not divided. I think eighty five percent of America was this exhausted majority or so. We're pretty, we're pretty good. We're pretty tight. I got friends who are Republicans, Democrats. I got friends who are uber progressive. And I got friends who are uber conservative. Hell, my two closest friends, one is uber progressive. The other is uber conservative. And we all love each other. And politics is a very little bit of what we ever talk about. Because we have things that bond us and i think we've forgotten so much of that because we've 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 had this this pandemic that is weighed on us that is cost lives that is that is you know that we've got this 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 war of disinformation that goes on but what ends up happening is is people go to the internet and they think the internet's real they think people live on the internet and this is all real if you turn it off it doesn't follow you It doesn't. But we've, we've, we've gotten to the point where we, we live in a world of affirmation, not information. And that's a frustrating thing. Because I like information. To me, information is vitally important. I want to know, but I want to get as much information as possible. I want to know because I want to see as much as I possibly can to form an opinion that is based on actual facts and data. Now, facts and data can change. You can get more information later. Some of the data could be wrong. Some of it could be purposely wrong. But the thing that I've noticed uh, over the last, really, since what's really been this crazy chaos since Trump came down that escalator, and it happened before that, but it really ramped up, is the fact that we stopped looking at each other like we're just people. And part of that's because we've got places we can go now where we're going to be in a echo chamber and that everybody else is trying to lie to us and get one over us and destroy us, which is ridiculous. And that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, that their leaders are above reproach, that their belief system is above reproach, that, and that, that's just not, it's so stupid. I don't know how people live their lives. It's like people who, who, who live their life terrified of microaggressions. So the same thing when I joke about somebody, you know, you can say, hey, you look nice today. Next thing you know, you're in front of the human resources and they're telling you you got to do six weeks of, of, of some sort of therapy because you sexually harass somebody. And that's a microaggression. They felt like that. Or we make fun of people who are, I'm scared of Joe Rogan's podcast. You know, it's that's stupid. Those same people who laugh at that will attack you because you say something about Trump. How dare you? Everybody needs to settle down. You know, when Biden, you know, Clyburn got behind Biden low those many months ago. I said, Biden's going to unite the country by boring the country. And I think that's true. I think it's absolutely true. The industries, like the media industry, which is a business, is already having tons of talks about, mm, okay, so what do we do now? Trump's going to be gone. I'll let you guys in on a little secret secret. When Trump was running in 2016 and everybody thought Hillary was going to win, the media 
world, the news powers that be, if you will, had planned on a 25% reduction in staff and about a 30% reduction in revenue, With even if the economy was good, because the viewership, the readership and stuff just wouldn't be there. Trump gave them all a bump. Trump leaving now, for sure, with Biden coming in, they're planning that and then some on top of the pandemic. So you think about that for a second. The business and their business is to give you the information they want to give, but it's also to serve a niche marketplace. And everybody does it. The same people that say, well, they should be fired and they should be brought up on treason because of all of the stuff and the disinformation about the president and blah, blah, blah. I said, you can go back eight years. Go look at Fox News and 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 see the way that they handle Obama and see a lot of this stuff that has gone on. Everybody does it. You found a niche marketplace. You find a lane and they stayed in it and they serve the people that they know will continue to come. They're not interested in a broader range. They're interested in serving their customers. And this year, it's been a hellish year. Let's not pretend it hasn't. we got to ask ourselves, though, going into 2021, are we going to find some common ground? I think we will. And we'll get through this. I think it's going to be a little bit different. Doesn't mean Trump's going anywhere. Doesn't mean he was a bad person or a bad president. Doesn't mean Biden's evil. But somewhere along the line, I think we need to ground ourselves a little bit more. Maybe, just maybe, say, hey, you know what? I like the Dodgers, too. You like the Dodgers? The story I always tell about, like, the bonding of of individuals is when I've traveled the world. And I've traveled the world since I was a kid. Sometimes at, like, 12, by myself, flying over to Europe to spend few months playing soccer with people i've never met before but i tell you what when you're in an airport and you're in a different country and you look over and you see somebody who's wearing a los angeles king's hat or a new york yankees jacket and you go oh you like baseball i don't know what their political belief is i'm younger but you know what? we found something that bonds us and it happens i think we need to get more to that and our humanity and less of emotion, and I identify only as this, and if you see different, then you hate me, because that's not a real way to live. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, hello fresh, hello fresh. Delicious, number one meal kit in America, comes directly to your door, contact free. Sourced directly from the growers, ensuring the freshness, family-friendly options, juice. Options for vegetarians and low-calorie? Yes. Easy to make? Yeah. You just choose the food you want to eat. So we're going to do this meal tonight. There is a card in there with pictures and a description of how to do it. Takes about 20 to 30 minutes from the time you choose it to the time you sit down and start eating, and you're saving as well. 40% versus shopping at the grocery store. And food-wise, there really isn't any waste. Cut down because it's portioned perfectly. So you're saving big there as well. Go to HelloFresh.com. The promo code you're going to need to use is Benson. You're going to want to use that one. Why? Because it's going to save you $80 off in free shipping. HelloFresh.com. Promo code Benson. HelloFresh.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. It's the Chad Benson Show. Yes, there's going to be a lot of vaccine and a lot coming out in January. Maybe 50 million people will get the vaccine. But that means that we have to be so hyper vigilant, as the vice president has said, about these coming weeks in terms of the basic public measures that we have to undergo right now. Dr. Brownstein there. Pence got his vaccine dose numero uno. The Jimmy Kimmel tweeted out, he doesn't deserve it. Shut up. What was talking about right there? Why does he deserve it? It's vice president of the United States. I don't like his politics and he's a jerk. Oh, okay, you're an idiot. That's, you're, that's, that's an idiotic thing to say. It is. 
There's why would you say like everybody talks about oh you know what this side's really mean and that side no both sides have skin in the game in being idiotic. It is really insane. It is. It is just I I'm amazed at that. He doesn't deserve it. Well, he got it, so there you go. He has some friends in high places. Tends to happen when you're the vice president of the United States. What about Trump? Very interesting. Something that you learned today because people, why isn't he taking it? Why isn't he taking it? Well, there's a reason. The president has not come out and said, okay, I am going to get vaccinated on this day absolutely for sure. We haven't heard that from him. Now, there are a lot of theories out there. Fact, I can tell you, that he's still receiving the benefits from this, from the treatment he got when he was diagnosed with COVID-19 and was sent to Walter Reed. He's been on this monoclonal and antibody uh, cocktail for some time, and, and it's working, and it's doing well for him. And apparently you have to have it like 90 days plus of time in between uh, for the vaccine to be effective, which is what they're saying. So that that may be one reason. Either way, Trump needs to be out in front of this, talking about it 110 percent, addressing the fact that he was a huge driving force behind this. He was. People could say, oh, he's not. He's an idiot. He's all these things. Once Stop that. If you're going to blame him for stuff, you've got to give him credit. And if you don't want to give him credit, then you're one of those people that are only interested in the betterment of your side. That's where we are in this country right now. I would rather see them fail than all of us succeed, which is stupid. We fight about everything. HGTV. First Lady Melania Trump was very proud of her America the Beautiful themed Christmas. And this special took a deep dive into some of the more spectacular design elements like her amazing gingerbread White House. Mrs. Trump asked them to include meticulous landscaping to the gingerbread display of the entire South Lawn. We never had the opportunity to do the Oval Office or the gardens and all that stuff. And that's why it was great when the First Lady said, hey, let's put the gardens in there. Okay, so let's do that. But. Let's also hate on her, because, you know, why not? While this year's White House decorations were the primary focus of the special, there was also mention of previous First Lady's Christmas designs and themes, and that did not sit well with several viewers who were expecting a Trump-only Christmas. One viewer tweeted, Very sad to see that the Christmas 2020 show featured constant flashbacks of Trump haters like George and Barbara Bush, RIP, and of course the millionaire socialists B&M Obama. Why, I asked, did we need this obvious political poop? Because that's what we do. Because it's fun to watch people argue and fight. That's what we've become in this nation. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. There's things that we should fight for and other things that, quite frankly, just we don't need to. It's not good for you. You need to be happy, healthy, breathe. Trust me, there's times when we fight. And there's other times when you just take a step back and say, yeah, this isn't the hill that we should be laying down on. Nope, nope, nope. My pillow, amazing. Right now they got a great special, twenty nine ninety eight, forty dollars off for the greatest pillow of all time. The one that started it all. Directly to you. Sixty day money back guarantee has been extended from my buddy Mike. Five dollars for a king size pillow. And all of those deals are right there in front of you on top of all of that. I love my my pillow. I've got a mattress topper. It is the most amazing thing. The Giza sheets are incredible. Now is your time to take advantage of this. The one that started it all, the My Pillow. $40 off. $29.98. Normally $69.98. Now is your time. Take advantage of it. Give yourself the gift in the new year of the best night's sleep around. Go to MyPillow.com. Use uh, my promo code Benson. Save big on this and all of the other stuff. The the mattress toppers, the Giza sheets. Grab it now. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. My pillow.com promo code benson at chad benson show twitter c-h-a-d-b-e-n-s-o-n follow along with us on facebook twitter instagram and check out chad benson show tv on the youtube as well you guys have a blessed wonderful day and weekend we'll do it again next week a week away for christmas what what night night jack this is the chad benson show 